Hi, it's Mr. Ta, and I'll be reading Tar Beach with you. While I read, I may ask you a thinking question or two to help you do your best thinking. After I'm done, you should write your answers in your online mm. reading response journal as a read aloud response. Remember, you can always watch the video again if you need to. And now, Tar Beach by Faith Ringgold. I just want to add that Faith Ringgold is not only the writer, but the illustrator of this book. And I find the illustrations really, really beautiful. Here's my first thought before I even start reading, is that this is a strange title, Tar Beach. When you think of a beach, you think of the ocean and the seashore. It certainly doesn't look like any beach that I know. I do know that tar is this black material here that uh, you sometimes put on roads and on the tops of roofs to keep them waterproof. So I'm wondering why she called it Tar Beach. There it is again, Tar Beach. Tar Beach by Faith Ringgold. I will always remember when the stars fell down around me and lifted me up above the George Washington Bridge. I could see our tiny rooftop with mommy and daddy and Mr. and Mrs. Honey, our next door neighbors, still playing cards as if nothing was going on. And Bibi, my baby brother, lying real still on the mattress, just like I told him to. His eyes like huge floodlights tracking me through the sky. Uh, floodlights, by the way, are those big, powerful sort of like flashlights that shoot up into the sky uh, so that you can see airplanes and uh, or attract attention. Sleeping on Tar Beach was magical. Lying on the roof in the night with stars and, new, and, and skyscraper buildings all around me made me feel rich, like I owned all that I could see. The bridge was my most prized possession. Daddy said that the George Washington Bridge is the longest and most beautiful bridge in the world and that it opened in 1931 on the very day I was born. Daddy worked on that bridge, hoisting cables. Since then, I've wanted that bridge to be mine. Uh, hoisting cables means lifting up those long steel wires that hold up the bridge. Now, I have claimed it. All I had to do was fly over it for it to be mine forever. I can wear it like a giant diamond necklace or just fly above it and marvel at its sparkling beauty. I can fly, yes, fly, me. Cassie Louise Lightfoot, only eight years old and in the third grade, and I can fly. That means I am free to go wherever I want for the rest of my life. Before I go on, to marvel means to be amazed at something. Daddy, to, Daddy took me to see the new union building he's working on. He can walk on steel girders high up in the sky and not fall. They call him the cat. Steel girders are these big steel bars that hold up the building. But still, he can't join the union because grandpa wasn't a member. Uh, a union is a group that helps employees and workers get what they need from, uh, the, from the bosses. But still, he can't join the union because Grandpa wasn't a member. Well, Daddy is going to own that building because I'm going to fly over it and give it to him. Then it won't matter that he's not in their old union or whether he's colored or a half-breed Indian like they say. Okay, time out. Let's think about this for a second. What just happened in the story and what is happening in the story? What's she talking about here? Think about it for a sec. If you know, shout it out to me through the screen. I'll listen for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, heard a couple good ones there. Remember that one for later. Let's go back to that. 
Then it won't matter that he's not in their old union or whether he's colored or a half-breed Indian, like they say. He'll be rich and won't have to stand on 24-story 24, 24 high girders and look down. He can look at his building going up. And mommy won't cry all winter when he goes to look for work and doesn't come home. And mommy can laugh and sleep late like Mrs. Honey. And we can have ice cream every night for dessert. Next, I'm going to fly over the ice cream factory just to make sure we do. Tonight, we're going up to Tar Beach. Mommy's roasting peanuts and frying chicken, and Daddy will bring home a watermelon. Mr. and Mrs. Honey will bring the beer and their old green card table. And then the stars will fall around me, and I will fly to the Union Building. There she is flying to that Union Building. I'll take Bibi with me. He has threatened to tell Mommy and Daddy if I leave him behind. I have told him it's very easy. Anyone can fly. All you need is somewhere to go that you can't get to any other way. The next thing you know, you're flying among the stars. And there they are, lying on their mattress on Tar Beach. Hmm. So this is a fiction story. You, uh, we, we've talked about fiction before. What events in this story could actually happen in real life? What events do you think can only happen in your imagination? When we talk about fiction, fiction stories means that those things didn't happen. But a lot of times when we think about it, we think about them as being fantastical, only happening in your imagination. Well, that is true, but also you can make a fiction story that could happen, but it isn't really real. So, what things could you write about that could happen only in your imagination? Think about that as you write down some ideas today in your writer's notebook. You can also think about things that could happen but really didn't. But we're trying to think of fiction stories, things that did not really happen. All right, until next time, I'm Mr. Ta.